uh, which was built by the Maldrigan Construction Cooperative. This was a really uh, exciting moment on our trip. Uh, the, the way the week was structured, we had we were in seminars all day, every day from <coughs> nine in the morning until about five thirty in the evening. Seminars, visits to businesses, very intense. And in the evening, we did um, some excursions. And one of them was to the city of Bilbao to this museum, which was very very impressive. And the next slide shows again. It was architect was Frank Frank Gehry, but you can see that the Mondragon Construction Cooperative they do they did this they do big bridges they do pretty major major things, and it's all again worker owned business. This is a picture of the Aleco Youth Co-op. This is a sort of a work study program for high school and university students, and they it's it's again this co-op is owned by the students, partially and also by the adults who are their teachers and mentors, and they learn. And they also make things that they sell, and the money that they earn from that they helps to pay for their university studies. And here you can see a young man who was working there. They were in this particular facility. They make these training boards. They learn how to make them. They make them. They sell them to other training um, uh, facilities all over Spain. In fact, all over Europe. Next slide. Here is a picture of the Mondragon University. Uh, Typical campus map, if you've ever been to a college campus. Can't miss it, so there's the campus map. And this was started, whoops, if you could go. Yeah, this was started in, I think, the 90s. And it's uh, it's not a huge university, but it's uh, fully accredited within the Spanish, and in fact, the European Union University System. They have an engineering school, a business school, and an education and social work school. Next slide. This is a. This is a presentation we heard at the university. It's a little bit dark, but um, the gentleman who's standing up on the left, Fred Freundlich, is actually um, from the US. Um, he moved to the Basque region about 15 years ago and has lived there ever since, and he's a business professor there at the university. The young man in the foreground is not one of the Basque students. He's a young man who was on, on, in our group, 19-year-old, who was <coughs> in our group along with his parents, and he hopes to, you know, uh, implement some of these things in his own future career. And this is a presentation we heard at the Ikerlan Research and Development Cooperative. I've got um, we've got a fancy book there, and I just realized you're welcome to look at it if you want, but this is all in Basque, so. <laughs> <laughs> but in any event, the Ikerlan gets um, contracts from companies and other institutes all over Europe to. Um, research and develop different uh, technologies and, and processes. They're doing a lot of things now with um, information technology, uh, energy, renewable energy, medical technology, and that sort of thing. And here again, we had an interesting um, question from one of the members of our group. Um, since this trip was sponsored by Praxis Peace Institute, you might guess that most of the participants were kind of peace activists, right? Well, one of them asked this woman and said, well, <coughs> if, if a company came to you and asked you tried to give you a contract to do work to develop, you know, weapons of war or something like that. Do you have like a written policy statement you won't do that? And she said, um, gee, um, I'm not aware of any kind of written policy, but we, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, we, we would never do, you know, uh, research on, on, on destructive things, you know, that's, we just don't do that. That's just part of their ethical uh, basis. So. Anyway, that was, we kind of asked these slightly cynical questions and they got these surprised and responses. Next slide. This is uh, Sayolan, their uh, new business incubator. Um, Sayolan runs as a cooperative, but their clients are people who want to start either co-ops or conventional uh, companies, they, whatever. You know, they work with the entrepreneur, whatever style they want to go with, they'll work with them. And interesting to note, the woman who presented to us here is actually from Mexico originally. And she moved to Mondragon about 10 years ago and has been there ever since. Next slide. And this is, um, was taken on our last day. Um, the gentleman who spoke to us here. Well, first of all, just <coughs> notice, I don't know if you can tell too well, the setting, the room. You know, all of the venues where we, uh, where we had meetings were just really well designed and, and comfortable and pleasant. And um, it just seemed to be a value to make spaces that are comfortable for the, whether it's students or workers or visitors to be in. So we had this beautiful well-lit room with big plants in the middle of it. We were sitting around in a big U. 
really nice. Anyway, the gentleman speaking has been with the Mondragon Cooperatives for 48 years. He started as a, as a teenager. He's worked in a variety of them. He's uh, since worked his way, and he's been uh, one of the top managers of several of them for, for a few years. He was also previously the mayor of the town of Mondragon um, a few years back. But in any event, uh, some people asked him, well, um, haven't, you, haven't you ever been um, offered jobs with other companies that would pay you a much higher salary? And he said, oh, yeah, of course, sure I have. But he never was tempted to do that because he felt so rooted and so grounded in this system, and it works so well, and he, it felt so comfortable to him and the people that he works with. And he uh, mentioned this, uh, what, uh, what I quoted here is, I took a note that he said, we are each very proud of who we are, and for the people who work there, having the right to decide is very important for workers and motivates people to stay. So they have really very little turnover. Um, we, we also talked with him a little bit about some of the challenges of the future, as um, they're constantly discussing and navigating how they're going to maintain their sustainability in the global, um, uh, the, the international global competitive market that they exist within, and it's, it's not easy. They've had to make some compromises, and they've had to adjust here and there, but they're always looking towards the future, talking with each other to find solutions without compromising the principle of making sure everybody is taken care of and contributing to their community. And now we're going to have just a few pictures that show you a little bit about the um, uh, the lifestyle that we encountered on the trip. This is looking down into the town of Mondragon itself. As you can see, it's very dense, um, very densely populated. It's only about 23,000 people, but it's very dense and compact. It's a real good example of smart growth with um, all of the living space concentrated in a s small area. Uh, there are lots of apartment buildings. Um, pretty much no one has their own home, but people live in apartments. But then you don't see poverty or you don't see homeless people either, uh, poverty-stricken people out on the streets. So it's a comfortable middle-class lifestyle, but very concentrated. And then the trade off is that there's beautiful open spaces all around. It's, it's, it's a fairly hilly, mountainous region, and so it was really, really, really quite lovely. And then the next slide, you can see this was on, a, on another one of our evening um, um, excursions. We went to the town of Onyati. And when people live in apartments, uh, they <coughs> want to get outside sometimes, and, and so they gather in some of the common spaces. This was a big plaza in the center of this town. And it was about 8, 8.30 at night, and people were out um, just walking, um, sitting at a cafe, riding their bikes, playing with their kids. It was just a real mellow, mellow atmosphere. And then the next one, this is the town of uh, San Sebastian that we visited on another <coughs> evening excursion. And 